Hi, my name is Glenn Gilmore, and for eight years I had the privilege of serving as mayor of a community of about 90,000 people. Now I work as an educator and also as a Microsoft brand ambassador. And today I have the privilege of uh, having with us Jeremy Goldberg, who is Microsoft's worldwide director of infrastructure. I should also note that he has a uh, podcast uh, on that uh, subject. And uh, uh, Alvaro Vita, who is Microsoft's uh, worldwide lead uh, for cybersecurity for public sector. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Microsoft has released a digital defense report that has this abundance of, of uh, information about the cybersecurity threat landscape from the uh, uh, public sector, uh, state and local uh, perspective. And I'm hoping that you gentlemen can help us understand better uh, what it all means. I'd like to though start with an understanding of what a smart city is and what the Internet of Things is, because that's kind of the trigger for, for so much of, of what's happening on the threat landscape. Sure. So Glenn, thanks for uh, having us. Uh, so let's start with the basics. Uh, fundamentally, smart cities are about people, people that are at the center of the problem solving, people at the, that benefit from the decisions that uh, we make, both from an industry perspective and government perspective. But it's really about how is that experience better for people in a city, not in just only the short term, but for the longer range. Uh, IoT, as you pointed out and raised, I mean, for a good reason, the Internet of Things, that's a broad term. Uh, and uh, but what we're really talking about uh, are uh, devices. And these are devices that are connected to the Internet. And in the case of cities, a specific example, right, these could be connected to street or traffic lights that send data. Uh, to the agency that manages them at a city level. Uh, so before, a streetlight might have been a small sensor uh, that turns on when it gets dark out, and it turns off when it's light out. Uh, and that's simple enough, but we can do so much more than that. And so, again, to that point about smart cities, it's about people being at the center of the solutions and decisions and the things that we make. And uh, it really leads back of how we you know, efficiently and better use the data that's collected and gathered uh, to meet the needs of residents and people. I, I love the emphasis on it's really, it, it's got to be people centric. We're talking about technology, but all the technology has got to be uh, people centric. Um, Alvaro, with all this streaming data coming from so many devices that, that uh, smart cities uh, and states are, are, are putting into action, what are some of the new risks that, that we're seeing from that? So while the security of IT hardware software has improved in recent years, the security of IoT devices has not unfortunately kept pace. And so there's a lot of threat actors that are exploiting these devices to establish access on the networks and use these IoT devices to pivot and get a foothold into the environment to then disrupt, let's say, the organization's OT operations. And so we've observed a variety of threats to exploit these vulnerabilities in the this internet exposed, depending from, you know, cameras to routers to thermostats to printers. And uh, however, despite the risk of millions of these devices uh, being under attack, they still remain unpatched and exposed. You just flagged a, 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 an important item that, that uh, as so many of these devices are being connected, before that connection happens, uh, cities and states should be pausing and saying, what's the cybersecurity of these devices that we're about to, to connect to uh, to our system? Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, we hear so much now about uh, 5G, that, that super fast connectivity that uh, so many cities are now uh, putting the infrastructure for. Does that improve cybersecurity or does it present more challenges for cybersecurity? Well, 5G is awesome. I mean, it, it would allow for, of course, you know, faster connectivity for IoT devices. However, uh, that same 5G enhanced connectivity can be used and can be exploited to scale up uh, mm -hmm. the number of attacks that happen and how fast they occur, right? So there's it's a dual-edged sword. So, for example, uh, today we uh, saw again attacks against remote management devices. Uh, for about 100 million attacks in just last year alone. And that's a five-fold increase in the past year from the year before, right? So when you see this kind of scale, 
Oh, and you say, now we're going to go to 5G, significantly augmenting the speed and potentially the scale at which these attacks would happen uh, should be a consideration, right? And so if there are problems today, we probably should try and be more prepared. And we're, we're seeing that, that with these connected devices, uh, we, we're hearing a lot too about edge computing that, that, that we're, uh, the devices have computing on the edge. What do we mean by that? And again, th this seems to tie very much into that uh, uh, IoT cybersecurity that we need to be concerned about. Yeah, great questions. I mean, Glenn, and what you're talking about and what Alvaro is you know, pointing out, it's, it's really, really on point is when we're, when we're taking something like 5G and edge computing, these are tremendous innovations, right? These are, and, they're, and the point of innovation is, is to move fast and to move quickly and to, you know, make the game changing investments for the things that will next shape the, the globe, shape the world and, and, and hopefully, you know, improve quality of life. At the same time, I think what we've seen over the past couple of years and in many ways triggered by you know, the pandemic and, and 2020 was, there was such incredible uh, speed and pace in terms of the way that government and public sector entities were innovating and moving, right? At the same time, with that type of innovation and the type of embracing of new technologies, you know, were all of our security kind of features and checks and everything in place, right? And it's the same thing that goes here is we want to make sure both the pace and the speed of innovation is good, but we also want to make sure that we're doing the best that we can to ensure that security, data privacy, those attacks, those events, you know, that do take place, you know, daily uh, aren't impacting like the people at the end of the day who uh, are supposed to benefit from these technologies. So on the edge computing side of this, you know, normally, you know, when you have an IoT device, as we're talking about, it's ending, you know, data or bringing or send, it's, it's sending the data back to the cloud, to a central location, like a data center. And, you know, there is computation being done on that. So that introduces a lot of time into the process, because even when the fast internet connections, the 5G and the future of, of connectivity comes up, it takes some time to send uh, all of that data back to a place where the computation can be done. So the edge computing puts more of that computing power at the edge rather than at the center. Mm -hmm. you, you made a comment to Jeremy that, that, that segues in, into a, 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 another important question that, that I have with all this pace of, of uh, uh, speed uh, and the new threats that we see coming, uh, what recommendations do you have for uh, public sector workforce to, to improve their uh, cybersecurity uh, skills? Uh... I think there's a few things, right? So uh, when we're talking about IoT, you know, 5G, OT, all of these um, different technologies and environments, uh, it's not any difference than the IT environment in, in the terms of you have to come up with a framework, a security framework, right? Mm -hmm. And a good frame to use is something called zero trust. What is zero trust? Basically, zero trust is a philosophy that says, um, always verify and always assume they're already inside your network, right? Mm -hmm. And so these mm -hmm. three principles allows you to create a security paradigm within your infrastructure that however you plan, design, and implement security controls, if you use this, you're going to have a lower surface attack area than you would otherwise, right? And that includes things like you know, applying patching, changing the full passwords, reducing uh, the attack surface by eliminating unnecessary internet connections and open ports, you know, use an IoT or OT aware network detection and rep response systems like you know, uh, Microsoft Defender for IoT as an example, um, mm -hmm. making sure that you isolate your IoT network from your OT and your IT network, right? And make sure that you know, ICS protocol, industrial control system protocols are so that they're not there for, for, for the grab.
Mm -hmm. uh, Alvaro, you you made a, a really uh, key point, which is that, that to have that improved uh, cybersecurity, begin with the assumption that uh, bad actors are within your system, and then from there build out uh, how you add the protections to minimize risk uh, from uh, zero zero trust a, a, as the, the the fundamental um, springboard for everything else. Um, do either of you have have additional um, takeaways from Microsoft's digital defense report? I know there's a ton of information, uh, and Alro, you just gave us a, a bunch of great uh, best practices. Some additional best practice takeaways that, that either of you might uh, offer? Yeah, I'll, I'll add. You know, related to, related to, comp, to complement. You know, what Alro has shared from as a former public servant. You know, with a large workforce that I, that really demonstrated incredible like stamina let's say <laughs> around the clock uh not only in the in, in the in the hard times right during the crisis moments but on a daily basis related to keeping our you know system secure and safe you know there is a required individual vigilance uh, mm -hmm. across any organization public or private and in particular for public sector organizations to commit to helping their workers stay up to date on the best cybersecurity practices. Uh, so yes, there are good things, and, and Alvaro mentioned them, right? Good password hygiene, you know, two-factor, multi-factor authentication, of course, a training on how to spot phishing attempts, which happen re regularly, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, that's a very common vector attack. Uh, but the landscape is changing all the time and bad actors are always looking for new ways and so it's not a one-off and that's not the way we should be looking at it in public or private you know entities where someone can complete a training right this is an ongoing process uh, of understanding and updating those best practices and making it as easy as possible uh, for the workforce to comply with those requirements thank you uh, Alvaro. Any, any final point you'd like to make Please check out the Microsoft Digital Defense Report. There's about 10 or 15 pages dedicated to IoT security. A lot of insights. They We go really deep into mm -hmm. uh, not only mm -hmm. what's happening in the, in the landscape, what are some of the challenges and needs, but also how to address those needs and some actionable insights that you can use today right away to start getting you in a better security posture. Gentlemen, thank you uh, both for helping to make smart cities smarter and safer. Thank you.